Tessa, can you say hi? Hello. Can you say bye bye? Yeah. Hi. So today we are going to read A Week in the Woods by Andrew Clements. We are now on chapter 11. And chapter 11 is called Spring. And it's a very appropriate chapter for what's going on right now. The world is turning to spring. At least our part of the world. Chapter 11, Spring. The boy who had told Mark that the snow would be gone by the end of March wasn't far wrong. By the time Mark's parents came home on March 10th, there had already been a handful of days when it had gotten up into the 50s. Mark barely had a chance to show his mom and dad how well he could snowshoe. The temperature still dropped down into the 30s or even into the 20s at night. But once the snow started to melt, it went pretty fast. A week later, Mark had had to hang up his snowshoes for good. Two-thirds of the meadow had turned to brown grass and mud. There were still some drifts, especially in the shadows and in the woods, but all the snow had turned to an icy slush. His parents seemed to enjoy their visit in the country, or at least that's how it looked to Mark. He was sure his mom and dad had spent time in their second floor office every day, but by the time he got home from school, their workday was pretty much over. During the late afternoons, Mark took them out walking around the property. He showed them the tumble-down cabin in the old graveyard. They both enjoyed Mark's guided tour of the barn, and neither of them could believe it when he told about how he'd slept out in the barn all alone one night. His mom seemed alarmed at this news, but his dad said, That took some guts, son. Good for you. And he gave Mark a slap on the back. In the evenings, they mostly sat around the family room fireplace and read or watched TV together. His dad had, sp had to spend a lot of time on the phone every night talking to people in California and the Far East, and his mom got her share of evening phone calls, too. Still, Mark was glad they were home and made everything feel different. Better. At dinner one night, his dad asked, So what are the kids like around here, Mark? You been getting along with them all right? Mark said, Yeah, they're okay. I don't really hang out with them much because everybody lives closer to town, but I'm kind of friends with a couple of guys at school, I mean. Are they nice boys? Mom asked. Mark shrugged. Sure. From nice families? She asked. This was one of his mom's standard questions, but hearing it this time irritated Mark. Nice? How should I know? He snapped. It's not like I've ever met their moms or dads, just like none of them have ever met either of you. Who knows? They're good kids, that's all. Nobody's tried to punch me out or anything, and nobody's got three eyes or two heads, so I guess they're from nice families, all right? Mark's mom and dad exchanged looks, and then his mom changed the subject. Tell me about this outdoor education week, Mark, she said. Anya showed me the information in the copy of the permission slip she signed for us. Are you looking forward to it? Mark nodded. Kind of. It'll be better than sitting in classes all day. And the kids I know said their older brothers and sisters had a good time. Ought to be pretty fun. Remember that trip we took to Aspen two winters ago? His dad said. Now that was fun. You got so good on those skis, Mark? Skied circles around your mom and me. Too bad we missed the ski season up here this year. The snow's not as good as here in the east, and the peaks are kind of piddly compared to Colorado. But I've heard there are a couple of good places. We'll have to do that next year, don't you think? Be like taking a vacation in our own backyard. I like that. The best part about having his parents around was bedtime. Mark would never have admitted it to Jason or any of the other kids at school, but he loved it when his mom came and sat on the edge of his bed at night. Sometimes she'd take his hand while they talked for a few minutes, and it didn't matter what they talked about. When she pulled the covers up around him and bent down to kiss his cheek, it was the perfect ending for a day. The worst part about having his parents around was how it cut into his time. Mark had learned that he liked being on his own. Leon and Anya had gotten used to having him disappear into the woods or the barn for a whole morning or a whole afternoon. His mom got worried if he was gone for more than half an hour. Still, after they'd been home for ten days, Mark felt bad when his mom announced that they had to take a trip to Europe. They'd have to be away for three or four weeks. Mark had been expecting it. 
but that didn't make saying goodbye any easier. Near the end of March, the days got longer and the ground dried out some, and it began to feel more like spring. And at school, the fifth graders started counting down the days before their trip to the state park. In science class, Mr. Maxwell shifted his pre-woods lessons up into high gear. They studied different kinds of trees, different kinds of rock formations, and the way that ice and plants and time can turn rock into soil. They studied how different plants grow at different altitudes, about the way rain and meltwater collect to form springs and streams, and about the kinds of animals that live in and around the White Mountains. And for the first time, science class had Mark's full attention. Mr. Maxwell was terrific. He knew all this material by heart, but more than that, he loved it. The first week of April flew by, and every day after school, Mark went home and out into the woods or up onto the ridge and saw firsthand all the things Mr. Maxwell had talked about in class. On Friday, April 3rd, when he got home from school, Mark sat in the kitchen for a snack. After he'd eaten an orange and some Fig Newtons, he got up to take his milk glass to the sink. Anya smiled and said, I am so happy when you take the time for your food. Mark said, You're right, you know, about my needing food. I'm really growing, don't you think? And growing up, too. Anya nodded, and Mark went on. You know what I found the other day? I found this place up on the hill in the woods. There's a big clearing, and the ground is mostly level. And it isn't even that wet, because it's mostly moss and pine needles. Isn't that great? Cautiously, Anya said, Sounds very nice. Yeah, Mark said, and the best part is that it's a perfect place to camp out, and I really want to. Tonight. Anya frowned. You don't mean sleep out alone again? Mark nodded. I know what I'm doing, and it's just right up that hill and into the woods a little way. It'll just be like sleeping out in the backyard. Anya shook her head. Absolutely not. Your mother do not like sleeping in the barn alone, and she said to me, no more. So the answer is no. Final. Anya wouldn't give in. So Mark settled for the next best thing. He asked Leon, and they camped out together which actually turned out to be great, because with a grown-up along, it was okay to build a campfire. Out in the center of the clearing, Leon showed him how to scrape out a fire pit with a hatchet, and then line it with small rocks and ring it with bigger ones. Then they pulled down some deadwood, mostly pine, but also some maple and oak branches. Mark took the hatchet and started to chop at the wood, but Leon said, I show you a better way. First, you break off all the small pieces. Good for kindling. Mark watched as Leon took a pine bough about eight feet long and snapped off the smaller twigs until it was just the main branch, silvery gray and about as thick as a man's wrist. Then you find a big rock, like so. Now stand a little to that side and watch. The rock stuck out of the ground about two feet. Leon stood behind it and lifted the branch over his head. He brought it down sharply so that it struck the rock about 18 inches from the end of the branch. There was a sharp crack, and the end of the branch snapped off cleanly and dropped to the ground. Raising the stick, Leon hit it again, and another piece cracked and dropped. Crack, 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 and all that was left was a short piece in Leon's hand. Now you try. Mark picked out a limb, stripped off the twigs, and took a big swing. The branch bounced and stung his hands. Nothing broke off. Leon chuckled and said, ha <laughs> ha, try it again but this time don't hit so close to the end. Mark quickly got the feel of the process and cracked the branch up into usable firewood. And even though his hands hurt a little, he knew it had been a lot easier than the chopping would have been. There was no rain in the forecast. The black flies and mosquitoes hadn't begun hatching yet. So they made their beds under the open sky. Leon on one side of the fire, Mark on the other. Anya had thought they were crazy, but the two of them had insisted that they wanted to cook their own dinner over the campfire. As the sunset faded in the west, Mark and Leon feasted on charred hot dogs and canned baked beans, washed down with lukewarm cans of Hawaiian punch. They roasted about ten marshmallows apiece for dessert. By the time the fire had burned down to embers, Mark was glad that Leon had come along. This was not like sleeping in the barn. The towering trees swayed and whispered in the breeze, and beyond the red glow of the coals, all was darkness. Both of them slid into their sleeping bags, and for almost half an hour they talked back and forth across the dying fire. Then Leon yawned and said, Time to sleep now. A peaceful rest to you. 
and with that he turned over onto his side and pulled his cap down to cover his eyes. As quiet settled over the campsite, Mark felt like his ears were growing. He heard every tiny sound, every little stir and rustling in the underbrush. He felt completely surrounded by nature, but it didn't feel dangerous or frightening to him. It was simply unknown. It was like a big book that had been lying open in front of him all his life, and he'd been ignoring it. Not anymore. Now Mark was determined to read the whole thing, and he knew he was only on page one, maybe page two. Lying on his back, breathing the cool pine-soaked air, Mark looked up at the circle of sky above the clearing. He had noticed the sky every cloudless night since they had moved to New Hampshire. But noticing the sky is different from looking at it. And now Mark really looked. As he stared upward, he couldn't find any words for the way it made him feel. There was no end to these stars, no beginning either. Beyond numbers, beyond distances, beyond ideas like big and far, Mark felt as if his mind was being pulled out and up, off into the hugeness of space. Back on Earth, Mark heard a sound from the other side of the fire pit. Leon had begun to snore softly, his breathing slow and deep. The rhythm was comforting, and after a long day, it was all the lullaby Mark needed. Well, that was chapter 11. I hope you weren't interrupted by too many sounds in the background from my video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this chapter, and be, stay tuned for chapter 12 tomorrow. Make a great day, everyone.